Never Stop Learning, week 194. We're gonna take a quick look at the render tree filter in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. All right, so here I am in a blank document and I just have my document filled up with a little bit of gray here. If you take a look over on the right in my layers panel, I have the background layer activated. Now we can run this filter on the background, but we'll have some more flexibility if we create a new layer specifically for this tree. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and create a new layer. With this new layer, uh, I would normally create a smart object, but uh, with this filter it is destructive. So first we're going to run the filter and then later on we're going to work with smart objects. I'll show you what I mean. Next over here at the top, I'm going to go to the filter menu, scroll down until I find render, and then choose tree. All right, that's going to launch your tree render dialog box right over here. And to the right, you see we have this preview of what our changes are actually going to create. Over here in the top center, this is where we have our presets. You could always make whatever changes you want and then click on this default and it'll bring you back to step one. All right, so back in this little drop down menu, you could actually load a preset. So if you have some trees that you used in the past, this is where you would load them. Or if you create a tree you really like, you could save it off right here for future use. All right, let me get rid of this guy here. Now we start off with the base tree type of an oak tree, but you could click on this little drop down menu and choose any type of tree you want. You got redwoods, maples, spruce, you got an ash tree. If you scroll through, you have cypress, bamboo, and Adobe even has some stylized trees down here at the bottom that you could work with. All right, I'm gonna come back over here to the top and the one I'm gonna work with is the spruce tree. All right, so I'll click on that one. Now it's loaded up over here in the preview. And let's start playing around with these controls. The first one we have is the light direction. Now what it's talking about is right over here, see how we have this light coming from the left. Now if I click and drag on this guy and bring it towards the center, you see now we have this light coming right here in the center of the tree. I'm gonna click and drag on this guy to the right, and now all the light is coming from the right side. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag, bring it towards the center. And next we have camera tilt. Now the best way to show you what this guy looks like is if I click and drag and bring it to the max. And now you see we're kind of looking at the tree more from the top side. We're kind of above the tree at the moment. So if I click and drag towards the center, you see we're going to start straightening out our camera view. All right, so I'll click and drag on it again. And then all the way towards the left, we're going to be looking at it dead on. All right, next we have leaves amount. Currently it's set to 70, but if I click and drag towards the right, we max out at 100, and now we have a tree that's really full of leaves. Now I'm gonna click and drag towards the left, and you see we have a lot less leaves going on in there. If we back off all the way, now we're only seeing the branches with just a couple of leaves. All right, so I'll bring some more leaves back in here. Next we have leaf size. Currently we're at 100, but we could max out at 200 over here towards the right. So now we have these huge leaves. I'm gonna click and drag towards the left, go below 100, and now we have these tiny leaves going on in there. All right, so that's gonna help you out with uh, different compositions there. Next we have uh, branches height. Now if you take a look over here in the preview, our branches start just above the dirt right over here. So if I bring the branches height over towards the right, you see the uh, branches start a lot higher. I'm gonna click and drag towards the right again to increase that value. Oops, wrong one, that was the leaves size. Sorry about that. I'm gonna go back to branches height. All right, increase that to about 261. And now it looks like the tree's kind of pulling up its pants during a flood so they don't get wet. All right, so let me back off on this guy a little bit. Next we have branches thickness. It's set to 100. I'm gonna click and drag on this guy towards the right. And that's gonna make the branches a lot thicker. Now, that's pretty obvious, but what I didn't realize was if you back off on the branches all the way, now you don't have any branches and now you have some cool leaves right here. Now, I saw a tutorial where a guy mentioned like, hey, if you take a picture and maybe the tree doesn't have as many leaves in it as you like, uh, you could actually generate them right in here using this technique. All right, so I'm gonna bring back the branches. And next we have this section over here. These are more like uh, little check boxes we could play with. So by default, we have the default leaves checked. If I uncheck this, now we have access to different leaves type. So even though our base tree is using the spruce tree, we could come over here and choose a different one. So we could choose a different leaf and that'll switch things up. So this is good if you have one base tree type and you want a different type of leaf. All right, I'm gonna leave the default leaves checked. Next we have use custom color for leaves. 
I'll check this guy to turn it on. Now I'm already getting some better leaves in there as it is, but we have this little color chip now. I could click on this guy and we could switch up the leaves a little bit. Now they don't have to look so natural. We could even go for an artistic look. So I'm gonna go with some blue leaves and you don't see it happening over here in the preview just yet. You wanna dismiss this window and now you see it's updated right in here. All right, so I'm gonna click on this little color chip and instead of going with a very artistic look, I'm gonna go with something a little bit more realistic. So right in here it would be for a different time of year, you know, different seasons that go on. All right, next we have use custom color for branches. So click on this, we're already getting some better branches in there. And if we darken this guy up and then dismiss it, there you go. All right, so down over here we have another set of check boxes. Now, so far, let me get rid of these guys real quick. So far what we're doing is we're, we're working with a 3D rendering uh, with some cool lighting effects in there that are gonna actually trick the eye to make you think this, this is actually a photorealistic um, tree. Now, it's not gonna work good if it's the centerpiece of your image, but if it's somewhere in the background, it's gonna look pretty uh, convincing that way. Now, if you start checking some of these boxes here for flat shading on the leaves, and then flat shading on the branches, we're starting to change things up. Now it's starting to look more like an illustrative look here, like we're running with that type. All right, so I'm gonna lock down the leaves rotation, and we need some help right here in the contrast. So I'm gonna enhance the, con enhance the contrast for the leaves, and there you go. So now we're running more with an illustrative look right here. Now if I were to uncheck all these guys, now we're going back to more of a 3D rendering here. All right, we also have this option here for randomized shapes. That's gonna randomize things for us a little bit in here, but it's gonna turn off this arrangement, and I actually like working with the arrangement. Let me uncheck this box, and I'll show you what happens when I slide this guy towards the right. All right, every time I make a change, it's like if I'm getting a whole new tree, even though it's a similar type, I'm just getting a different tree. All right, so you'll see in a little bit how that's gonna help us out. All right, once you're done making all the changes and you get a tree that you're happy with, you come over here to the top, and you could actually save this tree off and load it for a future project in there. All right, so I'm gonna click OK to accept that. Now, it was able to generate this tree really fast uh, because I have a really small document. All right, so that was in real time. And next what I wanna do is come over here to the Layers panel, right click on it, and convert to Smart Object. All right, the reason I wanna do that is if I decide to scale this guy down, accept that. If I'd like to scale it back up at a later date, I'm not gonna run into pixelation right away. All right, so working with it on a single layer is gonna have it independent here and I can make multiple trees. And let's do a little bit of workflow next. So let me get rid of this guy. I'm gonna create a new layer over here under the filter menu. We're gonna find render, tree, and we're gonna create a new tree. This time I'm gonna go with the default. All right, I like the oak tree, but we're gonna make some changes. I want the light direction to be more towards the center so I could see this nice and bright in here. Maybe even more. There we go. I'll back off on it right there. There we go. Now camera tilt. Let's tilt this guy a little bit. So that way we're not looking at it dead on. All right, the leaves amount. I do want to back off on this quite a bit. All right, that looks good. The leaves size will go a little bit smaller. That's fine with me. Now the branches height. I'm going to increase this value just a little bit. All right, because I want to be able to see some good uh, tree trunk in there. I, and this way I could uh, erase some if I need to. All right, branches thickness. I could back off on that a little bit as well. I think it would just look a little bit more interesting. The default leaves, I'm going to leave this checked, but I do want to use a custom color for the leaves. All right, instead of going with the green, I'm going to check this guy. Now, earlier you saw I went with the golden color. Well, this time why don't I go with something a little bit more orange and increase the saturation. All right, when I dismiss this, there we go, now we got an awesome look right here for this tree. All right, custom color for branches. I don't wanna to go too crazy with the color for the branches, but I think I wanna lighten this up a little bit. So let's uh, increase the light right in there. That looks a lot better to me right there. All right, I'm not gonna use the flat shading, but let's try out the enhanced contrast. Um, I'm actually not too happy with that, so I'm gonna uncheck this one and leave it right there nice and golden. All right, so a golden orange kind of. All right, so let's see, we got random rotation lock, uh, random shapes, I'm gonna leave that alone. But I do wanna play around with arrangement. All right, let's see what we get. All right, that one looks like it's opening up a lot. Let me see. 
All right, with these different changes, I'm actually seeing, I want to go with the brighter orange, I think. So let me click on this color chip. We'll come a little bit more towards the golden side. There we go. That looks pretty cool. All right, now I'm going to click OK to accept that. We're going to go ahead and have a new tree right in here. I'm going to right click on the layer so I can convert it to a smart object. Now Command T to transform and just make this guy a little bit smaller. All right, there we go. So we have one tree set up. I'm going to create another tree so we could have a different look. Now I want to show you how quick we could do that as well. Render tree. I'm going to go straight to the bottom of this menu. An arrangement, slide it back to the left. We got a different tree going on in there. I'll click OK. All right, Command, oops, actually before I change the size, I'm going to convert to Smart Object, Command T, and let's change the size on this guy a little bit. All right, accept that change. All right, now one more tree will be fine. Over here, Filter, Render, Tree. I'm going to slide this guy all the way towards the right, and maybe uh, I'll add some more leaves to that. There we go. Click OK. So we got three different trees really quick. There we go. Bring this guy down a little bit. Oops, actually, I didn't even turn it into a smart object. Let me take care of that really quick. There we go. You're going to see why it's important to have these guys as smart objects in a little bit. All right, great. So uh, let's see. The one over here at the top, layer three, that one should probably be my largest tree. So this guy's going to be the biggest guy front and center right around here. All right, then we have layer two right over here. This guy's going to be a little bit smaller um, right over here. And then layer one is going to be off over here. And let's make a copy of layer one. And we'll have this guy off way in the distance. So let's make this guy the smallest one way back over here. That looks good. This guy could be a little bit smaller. Remember, I'm just hitting Command T. And that's going to allow me to change the size on these guys. All right. Now, the, this guy up in front, we can make this guy a little bit bigger because it is a smart object. So as long as we don't go beyond 100% uh, of its original size, then uh, we're in good business. All right, here we go. Reposition this guy. This guy could be a little bit smaller. All I'm doing is playing around with this. I'm probably being a little bit too meticulous with this just for this demo. All right. We got these guys uh, in good positions right here, but they all have the same exposure and all that, so it's not really convincing just yet. All right, so I already finished the demo on how the controls work, but now this is kind of like how to work with the trees once you have them generated. So this guy up in front, layer three, uh, I want to add a layer adjustment. I'm going to come over here to exposure. There's a bunch of ways you could work with this, but I'm going to go the down and dirty way just so we can get this done really quick. All right, so I'm going to brighten the exposure, but I'm actually brightening the exposure for the entire image. What I want to do is back off on this guy. So let me uh, click on this button right here at the bottom. This one is going to reset uh, the adjustments to default. Over here on the left, I have this guy right here. It's going to allow me to clip this to just that particular layer. And now I'm going to back off on the exposure. I mean, I want to increase the exposure so that it's a little bit brighter than the rest of them. All right, here we go. This one's going to be up in front, so we want it nice and bright. That looks good. All right, next, let's move down to layer two which is this guy, just in case you're not sure which one it is. All right, now, before I play around with the exposure, uh, I want to have this guy activated over here at the top under the filter menu. I'm going to choose Blur, Gaussian Blur. All right, now this is a smart object, so we're able to make some adjustments and play around with it again later on if we need to. I'm just going to make a slight blur, maybe 0.3 pixels. All right, click OK to accept that. Now we have the Gaussian Blur applied to layer two right over here. Next, I want to add that exposure adjustment. So I'll come back, exposure, and we're going to back off on this guy a little bit, make it a little bit darker. Don't forget to clip it. All right, there we go. So we're darkening this guy up a little bit. All right, that looks good. All right, now over here, I'll have layer one copy. I want to apply this Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to Option, click and drag it onto that Layer 1 copy. Now I could tuck this guy away to give me a little bit more room, and I'm going to expand this guy. Double click on Gaussian Blur. That's one of the advantages of working with a smart object. Now I can just in increase the amount of Gaussian Blur. 
right in here. That's a little bit too much. All right, that looks pretty good to me. All right, I'll click OK to accept that. Now, the tree that we were affecting is this guy right in here. Because it's further back, a little bit smaller than this one, that's why I wanted the blur to go up a little bit on that. All right, now for exposure, we could add the exposure right in here. Don't forget to clip it. And then just go ahead and darken this guy up because it's further back. All right, here we go. That looks pretty good. And then we'll do this to the final one over here. I'm going to grab this Gaussian Blur option, click and drag it to layer 1. Let's tuck this guy away. Double click on the Gaussian Blur. Let's increase the value for that blur. Alright, let's see what we got. There we go, click OK. And you know what, I could actually use a reduction in size a little bit. There we go. Alright, cool. Actually, I could use it a lot more. Sorry, I'm being a little bit too meticulous with this. There we go. It's just it'll bug me if I don't do it. There we go. That looks pretty cool. I could even reposition this so I could be a little bit more at ease. Next, we got to play around with the exposure. All right, back over here into the adjustments panel. I'm going to add the adjustment of exposure. Clip it to that layer. And now we're going to back off on this a lot because it's the one way in the back. So. That's a little bit too dark, right? So let's bring some light back in there. All right, there we go. And because it's way in the back, if you also wanted to do something like, let's say maybe back off on the saturation a little bit because it's way back there, you know, that'll help you out as well. All right, so let me see. I want to grab this tree right here. Click on the layer to highlight it. And we're going to add that hue saturation. Make sure it's clipped. All right, cool and then just back off on the saturation a little bit. There you go, so I could tinker around with this all day, but check that out, it's a little bit more convincing look. We got this guy right here in front, and then as we go for the back, we're losing uh, the detail, and we're also losing some exposure, so it's getting darker. And there you have it, folks, that's the Render Tree Filter in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014.